Well, we told you we'll have an interaction with the couple himself, JB, the general secretary of the new patriotic party, John Buedu. He is right here. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, great. How was your weekend? Quite okay. Quite okay. okay. Right. And because of social distance, it means that we get to interact less and less physically. I, I, I think so. And uh, since this pandemic is going to leave it, leave it there for some time, I think that we need to adapt to the changing times and be able to communicate effectively. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That, does it mean you don't open the party office? Or oh, we do. But we, as usual, I just ask you also do here. We will ensure the observance of social distance protocols. Uh, uh, without a mask, we will not allow you to enter the headquarters. Uh, there's a lot of uh, very cap back buckets. A, a position advantage point for any person who wants to enter to wash his hands, sanitize, and all that. So I think that uh, we are keeping to that, and we don't allow too many people at a time to enter the headquarters and uh, to make sure that everybody and the lives of our people are safe. Yeah. All right. Uh, pr prior to coronavirus, all your timetable was set uh, for you to have. Um the election based on the last round up of the constituencies that you currently occupy to make sure you get candidates and ultimately elect your flag bearer. This has thrown everything out of gear. Uh, it's, it's rather unfortunate, but uh, all of us must adjust to the changing times. Just as you said, uh, before the COVID got to this level, uh, we had slated April 25th, uh, 2020, as the date for elections for where we have sitting members of parliament. Uh, we've done all the arrangements. Uh, we've put in place the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee. They've, they are done with their vetting. As per the rules, we allow them to publish the list of people that they are recommending for primaries. Uh, but as you know, if a body like that uh, take decisions and we sh must allow any individual who have some comments to make or some disagreement to also express his or her view. So uh, just as I said, uh, we had a body called the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee uh, that sat and received appeals and petitions from people who uh, think that uh, the decision of national, or disagree with the decision of the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee. They've also done their work and uh, Per the rules and regulations, their work must go straight to the National Executive Committee through the General Secretary. Uh, so they presented their work and their report. Uh, we at the steering committee level have also looked at the whole or the entire recommendations of the Parliamentary Vetting and the Appeals Committee and also had some few recommendations on our own, waiting to hold the National Executive Committee for the final ratification of all the recommendation. Uh, you remember that uh, a week to 25th of April, uh, we at the National Steering Committee level, mandated by the Constitution, that is responsible for taking urgent decisions on behalf of National Executive Committee, found it necessary to postpone the 25th April uh, well, parliamentary primaries indefinitely, and it included the acclamation of the presidential candidates as well. So we are waiting, particularly looking at the environment, what the government is doing, the government commanding control of the pa pandemic. Uh, we are waiting, particularly with the ban on public gathering uh, conferences. We are waiting. Uh, to see whether there will be an improvement or easing of, the, of that ban, which throughout the country, every country is looking at how best to return its country back to normalcy. Also taking into consideration, uh, 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 making sure that the lives and people of their country is safe. We have a very difficult uh, situation as we find ourselves as a country, although we are not in this situation alone. There are a lot of countries that have slated their elections uh, this year. 
A few of them have postponed, but a lot of them uh, continue with their elections. Uh, Mali just had theirs. Uh, South Korea had their fantastic election that led to a massive turnout, as opposed to even no normal times, by observing social distance protocols and making sure that even people who come to the uh, uh, electoral area to vote and uh, it turns out that they are exhibiting high temperature, they are giving special attention, go to special po uh, polling station for, for the election. Uh, Tanzania will be having the election in October. And we in this country obviously will have our elections on, on December 7th. Our constitution is very tight. Our constitution does not provide room for experiment at all, particularly with regards to presidential election. By 6th of January, uh, His Excellency Nana Adodanko Fado mandated four year term comes to an end. And uh, by that time, we should have determined who, as a country, we want to give the mandate to run this country from 2021 to January 6, 2025. So the government is aware of this. And we in the New Patriotic Party believe strongly that we don't want a situation where there will be an hour late in determining who runs this country. You want to make sure that we go according we to the calendar, just have the to, constitution We dictates. just have to be sure because the, the, the kind of chaos, if you are not very careful, that uh, will send this country into may, may not be uh, uh, imaginable. You can't, you can't estimate it, you understand? So as government is ensuring, putting in place measures, to ensure that our lives are safe. Government is also conscious that certain institutions, like political parties, like uh, electoral commission, like NIA, for instance, have a, a constitutional duty to also perform. So I believe that in the midst of all this, uh, where government is also clear that the Zema 7 election must, be, must necessarily be held, it will obviously put in place measures that are, will allow this institution. Because it is not only the new patriotic party who have not yet finished their parliamentary primaries. NDC have a lot that they've not done uh, yet, as we speak now. Uh, other political parties have not even had their national executive committee elections, and they've not done their presidential elections. They've not selected their parliamentary candidates, and all. And you know. The election is not an event, it's a process. And it's a process that starts from somewhere leading to the main day and after the so main far, day. So uh, far, so far with yeah. the party, how many of your would-be interested candidates have come with complaints to the body that is responsible for resolving these grievances about not having the opportunity to contest? Uh, if you check the list, you have close to uh, close to. 50, 60, but uh, about uh, 25 constituencies that uh, we receive complaints and uh, petition from members of our party to who disagreed in some way or the other with the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee. Yeah. Mm, because some of those complaints, some of which we have received, uh, indicate that the party silently seemed to be backing certain individuals than having an open contest? The party, just as I have said, the party's decision to allow contests is in the bosom of the National Executive Committee. And it is for that reason why, as we speak now, even those who filed without a contest, even at the time of opening nomination, it is up to the National Executive Committee to agree that they should go on a post, even at that level. Not to talk about people who could not go through National Parliamentary Vetting Committee, people who were also not recommended by the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee, and even people who were not recommended at the National Steering Committee. So the ultimate decision maker, the organ, that have that responsibility, the National Executive Committee. So any news you hear outside, it's, it's, it's news that you must also decipher. But you must know, if you're a party person, you must know that it is after the National Executive Committee meeting has been held, which I believe that, like I told you, if uh, uh, the ban on public gathering and uh, conferences are eased a little, 
we will obviously have that uh, meeting to decide uh, on the way forward for the 168 constituency. Just as I told you, uh, when we open nomination, about 34 of the constituencies, uh, only one person far to contest in those constituencies. 34 of them. So out of the 168, you are having close to 134 of them that went through uh, the vetting process. At the end of the parliamentary vetting process, some also were uh, 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 scheduled to go on a post. At the end of the parliamentary vetting process, those who made an appeal after the appeals committee have gone through uh, uh, the details, invited witnesses and all that. Some also uh, uh, ended up going on a post. But all this should be put together. Because you realize that even when we open presidential candidate nomination, it is only Nana Adodanko Akufuado, the president of the Republic of, uh, of this country, put in an application to contest and effectively filed. Even okay. he, we still, he's not a candidate yet. Right. We still have to have a national congress to acclaim his candidature. Right. You understand? As we speak now, he indicated when he was filing that he would have loved to go again with uh, his vice president, the vice president of this country, as his running mate. Even that decision must go through the National Council of the Party with that recommendation. That's just a formal process. It's, it's a, a formal he's process. He's the president it's, of the land. If you don't, and he, he's the only one who has found We've to seen contest. in this country where sitting members of parliament, a sitting president have been contested by their own people. We've seen in this country. So it is not an automatic thing. It is a process that you need to go through because that's what the dictate of your constitution is. If you sidestep that process, although you are saying that it's a normal process, you can be slapped with, with all kinds of challenges that is, is not helpful. When we put out country. the poster, this is what we got. Please kindly ask John Buedu, the general secretary of the MPP, what they are doing about the unopposed issue in a brim constituency has it come to your attention over 300 police station executives have filed a petition calling for an open contest and this has been submitted to his good office they should allow for open contest in order to unite the party in the brim constituency what do you say this, to this? this is a matter for national executive committee not for I, you i told uh, yeah i told you we have processes uh, the first process is the national parliamentary vetting committee if anybody like uh, they put together their concerns, they could have gone to the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee. Even if they couldn't, we had the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee. These petitions could have gone there to as part of their determination of 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 uh, 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 deciding whether to uh, open for primaries or not. Uh, so that uh, opportunity or window is also gone. But we still have a National Executive Committee that will be meeting. And at that meeting, we are going to take the constituencies one by one. All the 168 constituencies, we'll pick them one by one. Those constituencies that are issues, those constituencies that uh, uh, some were not recommended, all these will be discussed and a final decision will be made. And that will be the final decision. Mm. So yes, we've received similar uh, concerns and complaints by individuals or group of uh, people in the party that all these things will be compiled for the attention of the National Executive Committee. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think that at least even for first time MPs, the party needs to protect them? And it's not a question of protecting them. It's a question of the party taking a strategic decision towards the elections and making sure that we we'll put our best foot forward. We are not in politics just for AC. We are in politics to win elections, both presidential and get majority in parliament in order to be able to implement our ideas and our programs. So it is not just about being there. Other than that, there, will be, there wouldn't be any need for pulling station executive. There wouldn't be any need for electoral area coordinators, constituency executive, regional executive, and national executive. And even on top of national officers, we have other bodies, national steering committee, national executive committee, and the national council of the, of the party. In all these, we still have a national conference. That is the ultimate decision-making body of the party. So, for instance, if you take a constituency like a Kunfi, 
We've never won a Kumfi constituency before since 1992. The only time we won is uh, the 2016, we won that seat. Even then, we lost the uh, presidential. With such a seat, if the MP had not done anything untoward, if he is able to manage his constituency so well, if he's not having challenges in his constituency, I can't see why the party cannot take a decision that let us let this uh, gentleman go. Oh, fortunately for us, nobody contested him. But I'm just giving you an example. What about Bantama? Where, Bantama, Bantama saying, for example. Can, you I, have can I finish? Can I finish? I'm giving you an example of, of where uh, strategically as a party, we need to put that constituency in an ICU uh, 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 condition to manage it because it's very fragile. It's a constituency that we've never won before. There are issues that we need to manage. And opening it up for uh, an open contest may do some damage to the party, so to speak. So it depends on the constituency. So you look at some peculiar constituency. We, we do, but I'm, the example that I gave you clearly we didn't even prevent anybody from contesting. At the end of the filing period, it is only one candidate that put up mm. uh, his, 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 his... There, there, there are some here. notable strong... What are you going to uh, don't worry, say about Bantama? Let me, let, me, are, let me ask. Uh, so, where, what are you going to okay, say about so Bantama? Okay, so there are some strong no, no, personalities. Come, come back to okay, There are some strong personalities. Why I'm, don't you come to Bantama? I'm asking. Okay. Um, like, the member of parliament for Bantama, he's been contested. Mm -hmm. And then also we have uh, Dr. Mark Esibe, your boss constituent. He's mm -hmm. been contested. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there, are, there are some commentators who believe, based on their observation of the political trends, mm -hmm. that at least the party should protect some of these areas. They are the same people, if we had done so, who also say that we are, we are preventing other people from also contesting. How different is that constituency from other constituencies? You understand? They are the same people, the very commentators, who will be the ones who will start accusing the party of being undemocratic and all that. So I don't see it depends on the constituents. And you must also know that there are constituencies that have challenges that span between periods of time. You understand? For instance, let me give you a typical example. The constituency that you mentioned, uh, Jose Sibi, he's been contesting this individual for almost two, three times over a period of time. You understand? So what would be the reason for us to say that this gentleman should not be allowed to contest? What would be the reason? You understand? And even that reason does not lie in my mouth. It lies in the uh, National Parliamentary Vetting Committee, which uh, did the vetting and uh, uh, passed both of them. It lies if anybody had a difficulty, just as you are saying that there are individuals who think that some constituencies need to be protected. They could have written to National Parliamentary Appeals Committee, or even now, if they have any reason that they think that the reason is strong enough, they can write to the National Executive Committee through me, and it will be put before the National Executive Committee. So I don't think that the door is shut to some of these discussions at all. Mm. And we know that what is currently dominating the headlines, for which even we've had the National Identification Authority come to react strongly, and of course, uh, your party as well, uh, with your campaign manager for 2020 also reacting strongly, is the related issue about whether or not the Electoral Commission should compile a voter's register. No, I think that question has been solved. That question had been agreed on. That decision has been made. There has been a lot of discussions about whether we should have a new register or not uh, at IPAC level, at a lot of forums that uh, the platform was, was given. It just ended last forum that determined whether we should have a new register or not was the forum that was organized by the advisory committee to the electoral commission. Majority of the political parties present at that meeting agreed that there must be a new register. Majority, and it is clear. So what else? I'm not saying that majority decision is always right anyway, but I'm saying that just as we did in 2015, where after an extensive discussion about the need for a new register, we're pushing for a new register. The NDC in particular was also pushing for the register to be maintained. The then uh, head of the Electoral Commission with her commissioners 
convene another meeting like we did just recently. And at that meeting, at the end of the exercise, the committee felt that there's a need for us to sanitize the register. And there's no need within the period of time for us to organize a new register. And it ended there. We were pushing for a new register. We were now giving. We got back on our drawing table and put in place measures that enable us win by, by the widest margin ever. You understand? So I don't think that there's, there's any debate on the need for a new register now. What is debatable if the NDC will be fair to themselves and also help their people? Is what measures? Is the Electoral Commission going to put in place in order to ensure that people don't cram up at the polling stations in the attempt to register? And what other safeguards are they going to put in place to ensure that people are safe and, 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 and healthy uh, after the exercise? So I don't think that that is on the table at all. And we expect that the Electoral Commission, as they've indicated, that uh, they are ready to compile a new register and we are also waiting for them to bring out the measures that will safeguard our lives. So I don't think that's debatable at all, unless the NDC wants to reignite the debate on that matter. If not, we've discussed and we've passed there. We are waiting for the Electoral Commission to tell us their preparedness towards uh, 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 compilation of the new register. and. And they are preparedness towards uh, the December 7th elections. A key concern that they, alongside those who seem to agree with them, have raised is a related issue about whether we could have enough voters get access to, because they want to register, the relevant documentation, whether it's an NIA card or the relevant ones to be able to register. Uh, why, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Because, uh, one, you see, then DC had a wonderful opportunity from the people of this country to uh, be given the mandate to run this country for eight years, 2009 to 2016. We are then, they ran this country from 2000 to 2008. They are the same party and with another they ran the country for 11 years. They did not think about having a one stop shop national identification card that identify citizens and non-citizens of this country. We started a process between 2007 and 2008. Unfortunately, we lost the 2008 elections. For eight years that they were in power, they couldn't complete the exercise. They could not complete the exercise. And you remember that when we put it before parliament for the exercise to have that legal cloth or legal background for us to go on, they even boycotted and decided not to be part of it. So is it not strange for the same people who said that uh, national education cars are unnecessary, they are not going to be part of it, are now complaining that the, the, the education system has not captured enough people? Is it not strange? Don't you think that it is a reason why maybe a lot of NDC people did not even register with the National Identification Authority? Don't you think so? But if the leadership of the party in parliament have indicated openly and until now nobody has heard them reversing that decision and advising their people to go out there and register is that not it have you ever heard from them that they are urging on their members or even the entire citizenry to go out there and register they've not done so and the very people who now come back and say that the numbers are not enough, those giving the cars are not enough. And you see, I, I, I shudder to understand, and sometimes I think that the media should go beyond just listening to some of these cacophony. Because one, for you to say that the National Identification Authority have deliberately done the strongholds of the NDC and left the strong. What, what, what was the logic behind that? Because look, in this country, if you take Upper West, if you are using the parliamentary seat, NDC has six uh, constituents, NDC, MPP have five. The only region in the, in, in, uh, amongst the, the northern regions that you can say is a stronghold of NDC is Upper East. 
If you come to Northeast, and these are three parliamentary and we also have three. If you come to the Northern region, we have nine. They also have nine. Savannah, they have six. They have six. We have one. If you come to Bono region, we have almost about 90%. If you come to Ahafo region, we have four. They have two. If you come to Bono East, that they have a bit of a majority. If you come to Western region, you have close to 98%. If you come to Central region, you have 19 out of 23 constituencies. If you come to Greater Accra, we have, we have uh, 24. Now, NDC has 13 uh, 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 city members of Accra. We have 21 in, 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 in Greater Accra. If you take Eastern region, so on what basis were you expecting the National Identification Authority to have conducted its activity. Because uh, if you take the 16 regions, you can barely get NDC having uh, a strong stronghold per the recent elections of just about five, five regions. So th 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 there's no logical uh, sequence to what they, they said. It does not make sense. Even they, when they were in power and tried to uh, half-heartedly uh, go ahead with uh, the a registration exercise. They did the same arrangement. It depends on the strategy of the National Identification Authority. In what sense does this link to connivance with government and party to rig elections in favor? Well, they, 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 <laughs> what, what is this? They, they raise issues of how logistics were beefed up in the Ashanti region please, and the please, Eastern please. region. Of course, this has been dispensed by the Throw it to the dogs. And, and, to the and, dogs. and consistently, uh, they seem to be ha 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 hampering on the fact that if you look at the strongholds of the MPP, so to speak, the Ashanti and the Eastern region, <laughs> there seem to have been more time also spent for the <laughs> registration. It's not true. It's not true. You know it. How can you say that more time was spent in the Eastern region when even the time allotted to them didn't last? as a result of COVID. So you, you listen to some of these things, and you, you shudder to understand that. What is the motive of the NDC? Are they prepared for the December 7th elections? If they are, then I don't think that is the kind and the line of questions they, be, should, they should concern themselves with at all. What they think, I think they need to do, they should concentrate on putting out and preparing their manifesto. They should concentrate on having alternative to the excellent performance of the new patriotic party and be ready to debate us on those issues. You understand? Because you were given the opportunity to run this country for eight years. You took this country at a GDP level of close to 8.3. By the time you were living, it is 3.7. Even when we have been able to discover oil in commercial quantities that was added to our GDP computation in 2011. It is only in that uh, uh, year that they achieved a GDP growth of 14.5%, 14.3%. Since then, they've never been able to do so. Do you run a country where you couldn't even pay for teacher training allowance, you couldn't pay for nursing training allowance, even chalk you couldn't provide? Chalk, 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 chalk you couldn't provide. So this is the country we are talking about. We've taken over for the past uh, three and a half, four years. You must be ready to debate. You must be ready to put in place some programs that will ensure that even the Ghanaian people will listen to you a bit. You still lose, but at least you, you, you have put up some, some dispirited performance, which is OK. What the NDC, if I were in their shoes, should concern themselves about is how the Electoral Commission will put in place measures because it is not possible there wouldn't be registration exercise in this country towards the master. It is not possible. But we have people who have turned the age of 18 whose numbers are huge, close to 1 million plus. Are you saying that we can have a credible election with integrity and, and the needed uh, uh, confidence when close to 1 million people who are qualified to vote are disenfranchised? Is that, is that possible? So that is what that kind of debate, that kind of discussion that I expect that uh, brothers from the uh, brothers and sisters from the NDC should engage us. Let us together. I would have wished, instead of them putting the argument the way they've put it, I would have wished that they will call on us to join them in suggesting to the electoral commission because our job as or our mandate 
as, as a political party is not to take to the Electoral Commission. It's to advise. That's why we have the Interparty Advisory Committee. Our job is to advise. So I expect that if they clearly are willing to contest the December 7 election, by now they should have a strategy within the challenges that we have to advise the Electoral Commission to be able to put in place measures that will save guys the lives of our people and also ensure that the process leading to elections are met. A continuous aspect of trying to get all the parties on board to do this is the fact that the Electoral Commission is the player that is going to regulate this. Mm -hmm. Now the Electoral Commission on one hand says that it is going ahead. Indeed there's a tender. Of course the period for the tender has even ended. And so it means that the registration will take place. Yeah. At which point in time do you think the parties need to come back to the table and rally behind the Electoral Commission? I'm today? saying that at all times we need to rally behind the Electoral Commission uh, depending on what decision they take because they are responsible for the management of the elections and if anything go wrong it is they and not the NDC who will be accused of having not been able to manage the election well. This is where we are. The Electoral Commission said they've done their preparation, they are ready, they are waiting for the uh, social discounts protocols to be eased or lifted a bit to allow them to be able to uh, put in place the measures that they uh, uh, think about to organize a successful registration exercise and continue the process to a very credible and transparent elections in this matter. So I expect the NDC to come up. I expect the NDC to churn out some ideas for discussion. You understand? Because we are waiting for the Electoral Commission to come out with the set protocols that they want to put in place. We will interrogate those protocols and make sure that our people are safe. For instance, the last uh, IPAC meeting that we held, then DC boycotted it. They even wrote a letter that they were not going to be part of that meeting. Yeah? And as a result, they think that it's unnecessary for Electra going to have iPad. But they even sent somebody there, a Tokuno, to come and almost insult all of us and left. At that meeting, the CI that is before the, uh, the parliament that is awaiting maturity was discussed at that meeting. You were not there. Was discussed at that meeting. But that meeting was called to inform political parties per the political parties' rules that 21 days to an intended registration, political parties must be informed. So we are called for that information. But other things also came on the table. And the CI and the requirement for registration was discussed in more details. You had then boycotted uh, uh, that meeting. So you were not on the table. So if you had issues with the Electoral Commission limiting uh, uh, requirement to passport, NIA, and also having, if you don't have both, having two people to guarantee for you. They've even expanded. We used to have a situation where uh, uh, an individual can only vouch for five people. They've expanded it to 10, you understand? So if you had something to put on the table, you should have been there where the discussion was necessary. You don't finish and come back weeks later, sleep and wake up and think that you need to just say something. That is not the forum for that discussion because the CI is in the process, it, uh, it takes time to mature. So you failed your people. This is, this is clear lack of proper leadership of the NDC. You fail your people, assuming even the point that you were raising is right. You fail them because at the time that you need to discuss it, you are no, nowhere on the table. In all this, and you have great experience in party politics in Ghana. How relevant would you say the Interparty Advisory Committee is in the scheme of contributing to, complementing the efforts of the Electoral Commission in the organization of general elections? It, it continues to be relevant and very, very useful, just as the motive for setting up is right from 1994, 95, thereabouts. But it is that platform that will have the opportunity to also contribute in helping the Electoral Commission to take decisions. And this 
we continue to debate, we continue. We may not all accept. So you do agree IPAC is very important? It is critical. It is critical. And even, even the CIs and the political party law requires that such information platform should be offered for discussion and, and all that. So it's very important. It has never uh, been something that anybody is thinking of this, the uh, scrapping at all. To, even to the extent some are even arguing that it should have a constitutional backing. You understand? So I really think that it's, 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 it continues to enjoy the kind of importance as, as But as just a year has, ago, yeah. we had the chairperson of the Electoral Commission um, say this. He says the Interpatriate Advisory Committee is an advisory body and a forum for the exchange of ideas. Yeah. So we do not find IPAC to be interfering, but we, there are certain, there are certain elements in the society mm -hmm. who are trying to impose IPAC on the commission and trying to really reduce or water down their independence of the electoral commission. I think that how, is, how, is how do you think, based on this statement, the electoral commission would believe that IPAC is interfering or trying to water down in, in, its independence in any way? When you say I that IPAC that, is relevant. I, I think that what she said is nothing different from what the law is. What she said it's exactly what it is. IPAC is a forum for cross fertilization of ideas and uh, helping the Electoral Commission to take decisions. It is not the decision of IPAC, or it is not mandatory for the Electoral Commission to take decisions of IPAC. You understand? It is an advisory body. They will sit back and look at the advice and take, and it doesn't change. But for people to think that IPAC now should be the body that's decides on the direction of election, I think it's wrong. In Texas thinking, it's great problems for the Electoral Commission and its independence. So I don't think that what she has said is different from what the law is and what the practice has been. I've told you, we in 2015 and in other years in our election cycle have pushed for one direction or the other. Either change of register, either change of uh, the laws, either inclusion of one thing or the other. At some point, the Electoral Commission agrees. At some other point or situation, they don't agree. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. So nobody should ever think that because it's important to have IPAC, it means that it must superimpose its ideas on the Electoral Commission. It can never be done so. It can never. Assuming we allow that. Then at any given point in time, MPP or are thinking of uh, superimposing ideas on electoral commission is only to accept the views of the opposition. Is that what it is? Or accept the position of party in government? Is that what is that the chaos we want to bring to this country? So it is a forum that does that, and it should remain as such. Just as I told you, even people are pushing for us to have a law backing. The, the, the existence of IPAC. And I think that if we will be able to clearly, clearly define its role and have the legal backing, I will not go against it at all. But that is not to say that it is taking the independence of the Electoral Commission by way of imposing its ideas on them. That cannot be. On the front page of the Daily Dispatch today, and yeah, so. Uh, the, 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 the post of beneficence seems uh -huh. to suggest that um, there, there will be ways by which the Electoral Commission could go about the election, even yeah. though COVID still exists. Yeah. Now, uh, it suggests that voting hours could be increased to 12 hours, mm -hmm. and then voting should start as early as 6 instead of the 7. Now, how can the parties within this period where the World Health Organization uh, is telling us, as well as our own health service is saying that this is going to be with us for a long time, going to also position themselves to be able to fit into all these. While, while the Electoral Commission also prepares uh, the calendar. But, but for COVID, we're even looking at shortening the voting period. Mm. 
And if you want to shorten the voting period, what it means is that we must expand or increase the number of polling stations mm. per center. Mm. Mm. And if you do so, the Electoral Commission try to have a cap of 600 per polling station. And that gives us close to 31,000 polling stations. You understand? If the Electoral Commission goes ahead to place a minimum cap of 300, it means that we must have 62,000 polling stations. And that can ensure that uh, the number of people coming up at a polling station uh, is, is reduced. You can also look in at the voting time. But if you even extend the voting time and you still have huge numbers at one polling station, it will not even solve the problem. In, in, in South Korea, for instance, they had what we called a queue instructor who were controlling the queues mm. and making sure that not only at the time of voting, but even at the time of preparation for voting, uh, social distance protocols are observed. I think that there's, there's you see, the, the danger in voting into the night is visibility and the possibility of, 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 of other people challenging the process, you mm -hmm. understand? So these are a school of thoughts that all of us must be on the table to be thinking through uh, right, there is even school of thought that says that we must vote for two days, yeah, yeah, which is which is also allowed in our laws. Yeah. Do you remember in 2012 where there were challenges with the biometric system? Uh, uh, system the had to be extended to, it was extended. The, the you see, the difference there was that it was extended capriciously. There were constituencies or polling stations that people couldn't vote, but. Uh, a decision was not taken to extend it. There were some that the decision was taken to extend it. And if you are going to do that, it must be backed by law, by a CI. Definitely. Because, you see, the danger is that if you determine election results before others are going to vote, it is likely to change their opinion towards, towards, towards one part, political party or the other. So if we are to even take a decision, assuming the pandemic get worse, there are numbers now and the recovery rate and the death rate, I think that it is manageable. We wouldn't have even expected even one person dying, but it's manageable. If you have to take a decision that we should vote for two days, then it means that you start, maybe let's even take Ben Epstein's uh, suggestion, you start at six, you close at five. You close and protect, you count. You continue the next day, you come back, <laughs> you check everything, you won't count. Then the next day, you continue from that, that yeah. process. But even in that process, what it means is that the Electoral Commission must be able to determine who counts the first day and who counts the second day. Uh, and that would be a worry for the parties. That, that's <laughs> not just a worry. If they have a system that is clear, mm. if they have a, this, a system that is not discriminatory, if they have a system that creates an equal platform, for individuals to be able to determine that it is not based on because because in our country it is it is it, we I'm even surprised the NDC didn't play the tribal card when when they, it go it is easy to play the tribal card you understand mm. so if you have a system just as in other countries that have proper uh, NI system of integrity they are, they even use it as part of their measures to curb coronavirus by way of determining by alphabet who should go out at which time to purchase. And even in Dubai, what they do is that uh, in times of the lockdown, if you want to go out, they have an app that you can go through, apply, give reason why you want to go out, where are you staying? They will do the verification. Just to make sure they restrict. Just to make sure they restrict. Who comes out of and which they house give you time. Mm. By the time allotted to you if you are able to come back home that attracts a penalty yeah so in, having in, a very good system is okay in the and that, that helps. in the south korean experience they combined um uh, the normal social distancing the physical appearances yeah. with also the electronic voting yeah. and for you the parties you seem to have a certain distrust for each other and the process in a way not negatively uh, because you don't know whether if electronic voting is adopted or not, you could find transparency. What, what do you think about uh, uh, having uh, uh, electronic uh, means by which we can vote? Uh, you know, we used not to even believe in mobile money transfers in those days. 
because we've not had experience of it, we've not tried, we've not tested for us to have confidence in it. Uh, E-voting is done throughout the world, but not without challenges. You go to U.S., the massive challenges with e-voting and all that. And for you to adapt in a system, you should have an incubation period for experiment and all that. I think it was started at our universities. I remember about five, six years ago. The results of it is, 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 is something that you can write, even at our so-called place that people are supposed to be literate and understand and all that. So it's not because parties uh, 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 don't trust ourselves. It is not because of that, but it is because we've not been able to even start it. If you start it and we are able to have uh, some confidence in the system that it cannot be manipulated, it cannot be hacked, it cannot be uh, 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 padded and all that. Then all, everybody will be satisfied about it. So we will have a long way to go in that direction. Uh, you know, our internet penetration uh, throughout the country is not, it's not the same. And we still have challenges with, with some of them. It is even for that reason why now instead of using the VSAT system, we are using through uh, 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 MTN to uh, 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 operate our uh, data center and all that. So nobody is averse to it. As for changes, it comes with time, it comes with practice. And I believe that uh, just as we've grown to learn the use of mobile money and its safety, uh, as we also are given the opportunity for such a system, why not? Mm. Okay, and then I, I want to quote your campaign um, chair, your campaign team chair, in this last press conference. He said that the new patriotic party uh, has done well as a government in power, and this is manifested by the various policy interventions that has been introduced by the Kufuado led government. Um, if there's one policy intervention for which you say that even if for nothing at all, this will be the, the kicker for us to be voted into power, what would it be? Oh, free Nothing. SHS, of course. It's, it's a major intervention that has put the future detrimental uh, challenges that the youth is going to face, uh, have brought it to light and has helped in, in, in shaping our future. It is about close to one million people who otherwise wouldn't be in school. Now, it is even a challenge for uh, apprentices to get into some of these trades at this time. Unless the person finishes SHS. Either to just after JHS, most of them will come learning seamstressing, tailoring, fitting, and all that. Now, the mi minimum level of even uh, 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 total made to be SHS. And this is monumental. Apart from that, we've been able to also checkmate ourselves in terms of uh, our debt to GDP ratio, in terms of our, 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 our deficit for a period of time. We've been able to maintain within, within 10%, uh, even gone ahead to make a law that restricts us to 5%. In terms of also providing infrastructure, I think that we've done so well. We've been able, we've not been able to have uh, a lot of security issues as a country and this is a plus to the new patriotic party and I believe strongly as we continue to chart a good path, as we continue to help increase the discovery of oil that increases our base, as we continue to properly implement uh, the SHS, as we continue to properly implement the planting for food and jobs, as we continue to help increase the capacity of buffer stock in order to provide an easy and accessible market for our farmers. I believe that even COVID also provides us with opportunity to increase the capacity of our Tesla industries. Now, most of these face masks are produced by, by local people. And I believe strongly that we in the new patriotic party don't need any help from anybody, not even the NDC. If they decide not to contest, we'll bring them to contest in order for us to beat them properly in the December elections. Thank you very much, Mr. John Boydo. 
Yeah, and um, well, JB, as is popularly called within the party, John Buido is the general secretary of the Gafdi New Patriotic Party. Uh, please make sure always you get relevant as you contribute meaningfully to our discussion platforms on Facebook, Join Us on TV, through our Twitter handle at Join Us on TV, and then you get all these uploaded on Join News TV on, on YouTube, and then also myjoyonline.com bringing you all the latest updates where you can get all these referrals. In the meantime, I have to say thank you for passing through the studio. It's been an honor having you as well. But we want to have a lot of conversation on how we need to open schools. Because the Ghana Education Service is now collating this um, uh, position or the position of the various entities, NAGRAT, NAT, etc., to make sure the reopening is done. How is it going to be done? Mama, you'll talk about you next with this discussion. Do stay with us. Thank you.